Um, so I'm Pete Forsyth. I, uh, in uh, at the end of 2015, I did a short talk at the Future of Text Symposium in, uh, in the Bay Area. Um, and the, what I presented there was basically a list, which may or may not be sort of a, it's probably not a very complete list, but it's the kind of list I'd like to refine and, and discuss here, of what are the conditions that make for an effective collaborative community, whether on a website or in a web community, or maybe more generally just like a physical space, like a university or a library that allows people to uh, build things collaboratively. So for instance, uh, the ability to see that something has changed, the ability to see exactly what changed, the ability to see who did it, uh, the ability to address that person. Uh, you know, if you don't have those things, then you might find that one person is moving the table over one side of the room and the other person is moving it back and they're both getting irritated about it, but they don't really know what to do about it. So that leads to like futility and frustration. So what are the things that prevent futility and frustration and lead to effective collaboration? And one thing I, I didn't mention before that I think kind of connects is there's a really common thing that's said about Wikipedia, uh, which has been said for a long time, which is that uh, it doesn't work in theory, but it does work in practice. Uh, it's kind of a, a pithy quote that people love to repeat, um, but it, it, it kind of feels to me like you know, getting into like 16 years or so into Wikipedia, well, why aren't we updating the theory so that it does work in theory? Why aren't we, why aren't we exploring what are the conditions that make Wikipedia work? Because maybe the, the theory beforehand didn't really work, but really we ought to, you know, if, if we're interested in why it works, then we should be refining the theory and, and developing that. So that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at with this. So uh, yeah, so let's continue with some introductions. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's go around the room and, and maybe if you have a thought on this yeah. or. Um, so sure, yeah, so Ben Wordmuller. Um, the thing that I want to make sure that we talk about in the session as well is inclusion, because uh, Wikipedia doesn't necessarily work well yeah. for people who aren't working it. And, uh, and the, the, the skews, um, article skew toward that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Victoria Wing, uh, working at Mozilla. I, I guess I'm, um, interested in better collaboration between like the open source community and like companies that are open source friendly because sometimes it's a bit tricky to get that to work. So, you know. I'm Ali Patel. Um, two topics I'm interested in. One is that in a smaller community you often trust the other people and you want a different structure there. You know, in a very wide community where you expect to have trolls of harassment. Uh, another topic I find that I'm often writing my web pages partly to be useful, but also partly to be artistic expression. Mm -hmm. So if I wrote everything on Wikipedia, I would not feel that ownership. So are there hybrid models that I could write something, but I could still get collaboration, but it's not that anyone has a same, or anyone can't change it really, but you feel like it's I yours. feel like it's still mine, even though people are contributing. Like on GitHub, you have pull requests and you can own a project, but people can contribute to you. Are you joining us? I'm, I'm not really here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Ward Cunningham, and uh, uh, Pete and I have been conversing about this for half a year at least, and, and uh, believe that uh, uh, distilling this not as a set of criteria that are checkoffs, but as uh, areas of uh, uh, advancement would be uh, would be very attractive. All right, I'm gonna lean in so the camera can see me. Uh, I'm AJ uh, Jordan. Um, uh, I, don't really, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'm I'm interested in, you know, how, like, how open source works, like, how to foster community, because, like, I run open source projects, and, like, yeah, like, how do you do that? Um, and, you know, obviously, collaboration is just better for everyone, so, um, yeah, I think it's worthwhile to uh, pursue that. It's going to be, like, at the end of the frame, entire <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, th I think there's a bunch of things that we could kind of pick up on with that. Um, well, I, mean, I think if someone would see the direction, please so, take it. So, so I think that one thing that uh, 
really helps in any community if there's some some sense of purpose, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in the encyclopedia was to write an encyclopedia. And, you know, they could have a rule that says the content should be encyclopedic. And that, that defines it. Uh, I, I made the first wiki, and our goal was to invent a new literature of computer programming. And we asked that people not write about what we ought to do, but only write about what we've done and how it worked. And that was. Uh, was a very broad criteria, but it, uh, it it kept got rid of a lot of scolding, which is what methodology was before before wiki. So so some sort of charter, you know, that, that, that people know why they're there, or what the what, you know. Some people in a in a meetings, and, you know, they say, well, you know, if you call a meeting without an agenda, you know, you're wasting everybody's time. I would add to that. Um, like I, I totally agree with that. I would add to that just norms. So norms of communication. So uh, you've got the reason why you're there, but also a set agree, an agreement of guidelines about how you talk to each other and how you collaborate within within that purpose. To, you know, and to further that purpose. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so having, a, for example, in this community, having a code of conduct is really important. Uh, in online communities, having that having that as well. Um, like explicitly stated, so you've got something to refer to it as a subject. So the the just to be clear about that, so like the charter would be sort of what the purpose is, and then the norms that you're talking about would be like what are the rules of the road as you yeah. pursue that purpose, yeah. as far as how you interact with people. Like the why and the how. Yeah. I think it's also um, important that the community has a sense of like uh, owning itself, for lack of a better word. So like on Wikipedia, all of the rules are created by the community members. Like, um, I, I don't think none of them come from the Wikimedia Foundation, and that's... Um, well, some of the original ones were articulated by Jimmy Wales and were, okay. were sort of pushed down from on high and embraced by the community, but, right. but those are just some of the core ones. Sure. Yeah. And Larry said but certainly in large part, yeah. like, the, they're, they're curated by the editors, yeah. which I think fosters a sense of, um, I think you were talking about ownership further. Um, and the size of the community well, members here. Yeah, the size of the Because C2 yeah. was much smaller than Wikipedia, and I felt yeah. like I could do something useful there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's Wiki is very small. I feel like I can contribute there. Sure. Wikipedia is big enough. Like, well, anything yeah. I do is going to be a drop in the bucket. Yeah, the editors yeah. are going to come down and say, oh, we re re reverse that, delete that. And I, I don't feel like I have any say in Wikipedia. So there's, there's, I think, kind of a related uh, point, something we were talking about earlier. My Personally, my original entry into Wikipedia was through, like, I made a pretty conscious decision that I was going to focus on content about Oregon. And we ended up putting together a group called Wiki Project Oregon that was a pretty cohesive, and, it, and still is a pretty cohesive group of editors. It's, it's kind of evolved over the years, and it's sort of, you know, grown and trunk in terms of its activity level. But I think that's, uh, that can be an important part. It's sort of like, I think a lot of people have kind of had, like, I am a Wikipedian as sort of the core identity they bring when they log into Wikipedia. But then other people, it's like, well, they, they log in because they're interested in military history and they want to work on that stuff. And they develop a community around that or Oregon or... Did, did you... Were you a founder of that project, Wiki Project Oregon? Mm -hmm. And did you write a charter for that? No. But but just the name of it was a charter enough right. in its own right. Yeah, and it's and we would... You know, it would sort of come up in discussion, like, what are we here to do? You know, sort of as as things. I don't know. I, actually, I want to. I, I would want to sort of think about that a little bit. But I feel like that, like, like we would sort of have discussions here and now or there about sort of where the edges of what we were doing together. And, and I hear people talk about uh, like group health. And I'm not sure what health means, except if it's unhealthy, you're pretty unhealthy. Yeah. And, and was was that a healthy group, and did it stay a healthy group? Did it have ups and downs? Or? I think so. I think it had. I think it had ups and downs. Um, I think that it. Uh, I think it had a dynamic that, that I think is fairly common: is that you sort of you ended up with this sort of sense of some insiders that had been there for forever mm -hmm. and a desire for that core to grow, but also like irritation when people came along and you sort of got the sense that they didn't really want to contribute substantively or that they were bringing sort of problematic attitudes or something. And, and 
uh, you know, I think that none of us who were there in the early days wanted to, in general, be like pushing away. We wanted newcomers to, to come and, and sort of integrate with the group, but at this, but in specific cases, like just often, like dynamics would develop that made that difficult. Um, so I feel like it was fairly healthy, and uh, and and it and probably is still fairly healthy. I'm actually feeling pretty disconnected from it these days, so I don't really know that I could talk about its its, its current state. But when I go and check in, it's like there's still conversations that go on, and and you know it seems seems worthwhile. So that means it didn't depend upon you to keep going. No. I wonder if we can um, find a set of metrics for measuring. Uh, I mean, you said, you know, I don't really know what group health is. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we can find a set of metrics as to, like, how do we actually measure, mm -hmm. uh, like, how well a community is doing, that would be cool. Yeah. I actually, uh, something that might go into that list, I wanted to, like, when you, um, you guys were talking about uh, charter and norms, Something I wanted to maybe add to that list is um, regular communication, like a, like I mean, there's regular informal communication, but also something more formal, like a newsletter. Like the Military History Wiki Project has had its own newsletter for like a decade, and I think that it makes it easy for newcomers to get a sense of what's going on. You're not just sort of like, oh, I'm going to jump in and whatever people are talking about now and sort of try to catch a wave. You actually get a little bit more structure, and I think that helps. No, nope. no. These are actually part of Wikipedia. These are within Wikipedia. This is just people who affiliate on the idea, like, well, we're going to work together on making all the articles about military history better, or all the articles about Oregon better. And it's it's informal. It doesn't have like any spe like anyone who's not part of the group can work on those articles too. It's still Wikipedia. It seems like you need some sort of transition from I'm just reading these pages to I'm contributing typo boxes mm -hmm. to I'm editing but I'm anonymous to I'm joining a group. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you really take that long? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say we ever had a very formal notion of that stuff, but I do think that can be really helpful. No, open source projects vary a lot. Uh, I understand that the average number of contributors is less than two. Uh, but there are certainly very long-lived and very successful projects. And, and one thing that that really helps is if you, you know, again, have a charter, what's this software supposed to do, and uh, a, uh, uh, an expectation of how to contribute. Uh, GitHub makes it easy because it has this pull request, but do you or do you not? write a test for anything you contribute so that the tests grow at the same rate that the, the code grows and that's hard to do but some you know some some communities just say well if you're not willing to make that effort you're not really a contributor what so might have smaller contributor bases as not that yeah we did like with with uh with wiki project oregon one thing that kind of kept coming is like when it was started like a lot of wiki projects, we just had a place where people could add their name. That was joining. All it meant was that you added your name to the page. And uh, we never really, like, you know, we, we got to this point where there were dozens and dozens and dozens of names. And, you know, maybe even a majority of them nobody ever heard from again. Yeah. You know, and, and so then, like, if you want to actually get something useful for that, if you want to reach out and say, hey, I, I just worked on this article, I want some feedback, you don't want to work off a list where, half the people are unlikely to even see your message, much less respond. So, like, how do you go about doing that without making it feel overly exclusive? I mean, I think there, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the hardest problem in the world to, to solve. I think the reason that we didn't solve it is mostly because it was one of many problems we were working on and we didn't focus on it. But I think it's an important one. Be careful with the, the metrics for contributors. Like on GitHub, some people are just contributing to get more points so they mm -hmm. can show their employer. I contributed to five open source projects. Right. We didn't really want to. We were just doing it for the points. Yeah. So there's a gamification there, and they're yeah. playing the game rather than contributing out of goodwill. Yeah. But but gamification. I mean, I feel like gamification can be sort of a two-edged. So like it can be a really good thing in terms of helping people not feel paralyzed and not have some idea of what to do to get started. But it can. It can also be kind of just too much of a driver. Then. And it can even be a motivator for. Like so, when when whenever someone says gamification, I immediately think of Stack Exchange, mm -hmm. and like 
it works really well there. And and I have found myself like I, I was really into like uh, Unix.stackexchange.com for a while, and I would find that I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, oh man, I want the badges, I want the, you know, and I would know, like I would I would recognize that. I was totally falling into like the gamified design, but I'd still be like, I'm into this and like keep going. Yeah. Does that <clears throat> run the risk of overly templating kind of how people interact with each other? Like there's a balance though, right? Sure. I'm not saying it's like, you know, like uh, uh, the be all end all, but certainly it's a, it's a really cool model if, if, you, if you can make it work. Well, well you know, that, that site or that family of sites in particular, I think, has has defined its charter mm. very well. And yeah. in fact, you know, there are there are questions that are inappropriate. You know, yeah. what what they'd like to see is have you seriously tried to solve the problem yourself? Mm -hmm. Have you reduced it to a test case that is simple to replicate? Mm -hmm. And can you express what it is that isn't working for you? If you can yeah. do all those, there's no dumb questions. Mm -hmm. But that gives, you know, that, that essentially launches the conversation in a productive way, no matter how yeah. silly or small it seems. And they, and they also have, uh, like, building that charter is a first class part of the system, right? Like, mm -hmm. like sites go through private beta and then public beta. Uh, and, and that's all about, like, do you have a charter that, that works and is sustainable? I think Stack Exchange, uh, one of the important things about, like, what, what works well with Stack Exchange is that a lot of those gamification components are things that are outside of your control. They're outside of your direct yeah. control, right? You have to, like, the, like when you write a post that gets five upvotes, Right, so it's like well, you, what you have to do is you have to write a good post, you have to write a good answer, right. and then you have to hope that people recognize and agree yeah. that it's a good answer. Yeah, right? yeah. But it's like it, it's like it actually builds in that like are you actually bringing value, and the measure of it is if other people see it as valuable. Yeah, um, I, I once I think I was listening to the Stack Exchange podcast, and uh, I think it was Joel said something like you know there are lots of open source uh, Stack Exchange clones, but none of them work because we're not really about the, the software. Like that almost doesn't matter. We're a community building company. And they could well. Yeah. You know, when I was first messing around with Wiki, I had a really interesting conversation at a railroad club here in Portland that has a nice layout and they have a board of directors and they make a lot of decisions about how that layout's gonna grow. And like model said, railroads? Yeah, model yeah. railroads. And they said that uh, organizations that actually own property have a lot of trouble. You know, yeah. and they said one thing that they do is to be a board member, you have to every month spend at least one evening in there operating trains. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're not in it, for the, the goal the love of the, the love of yeah, trains. Yeah. If you don't want to operate trains, if you just want to tell people what to do, you don't actually belong in their board. And, yeah. and I thought that was a, a sharp criteria, especially when you're talking about, you know, a, a, I don't know, board of a city block there or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Victoria, have you, uh, you've been a little quiet here. What, what, what's your take on? Um, well, when you're talking about like trying to make it easier for people to get involved into something when it's like kind of uh, um, intimidating or whatever. I know that <clears throat> certain teams on Firefox try to like tag certain bugs as like good first timer bugs. It's like Squeeze a more if you here. do this yeah. first timer bug, we'll have like a mentor for you and everything, and then it'll be like totally like okay if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so. And did, and then, did that work or that didn't work? I think there it still seems to be happening, so I, I think, yeah, I don't know too much about it. I just, like, saw that um, they were writing about it. So, it has, so if you're new, then it, it helps you sort of, like, you don't find yourself as frequently jumping on something that someone much more expert is working on, and then you're right. immediately, like, in conflict over, well, who gets to fix it or whose fix is better. Yeah. And you have yeah. a better chance well, of just getting it in there and being helpful. But in particular, particular, in particular, it's it's like it's, it's a hand-picked bug that's like easy to fix right and it's not even it's not like so in in Chrome bio like we do this too 
and when I say we, I mean me, uh, <laughs> like I, I tag good first bugs too, um, and I pick bugs that like, uh, you know, it's like fix a typo or something like that, because it's not really about fixing the bug, it's just about get your development environment set up, like learn to send a PR, like, you know, do whatever. Yeah. Like get, go into IRC to like get help. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm finding myself wondering, is there anyone here who's, uh, Who's who has experience professionally as a community manager, or like who's, who's really engaged in that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, in different contexts, open source, uh, now with startups, mm -hmm. um, different different interest groups for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I brought up inclusion right at the beginning yeah. is that one of like we talk a lot about. So we talk about uh, charters, we talk about norms, we talk about regular communication. Um, if you're building a collaborative community, you need to, I think, have kind of a healthy um, gene pool of ideas, basically. And if everyone's coming from the same sort of angle and the same sort of background, you're going to have the collaboration is going to be lower quality. So you're not going to have a wider range of interesting ideas that you need to, to actually get the full project forward. And so I think what that also means is actually actively doing outreach in other communities and saying, hey, you know, you're welcome here. We would love for you to participate, uh, which is a really difficult thing to do. And it can feel sort of invasive. And there's a whole other set of um, issues around, like, how do you, like, if, you, if you're reaching into another community and, and, and inviting people to join yours, you also have to participate in that other community. And so one of, you know, your community itself suddenly has become collaborative with another community and actually the kind of the walls become for us. Um, and there's, there's an art to that, but I think it's really important and really important to to talk about because otherwise, you know, for example, in tech, you get a room of us that you point in and, and that's not great. Uh, and particularly as technology, you know, becomes more tangible to society, um, it doesn't end up serving everybody that, um, that is using it. So what like techniques for actually going into other communities uh, respectfully, um, and I can't like this is this is something I'm still very much struggling with. But um, you know, and and participating in other communities in order to expand your own horizons as well as expand the horizons of your community. Um, that's I don't know if anyone else like is this something I didn't, yeah. Uh, I just skimmed the notes. So uh, I'll do my best to try and keep that context in my head of what all of you discussed in the past, like 30 minutes. Or 10 minutes. Um, I so this whole like in a very meta sense, like indie web is a community, and it's based on a certain set of principles, and and that uh, that that has one set of challenges. But in looking at this, it strikes me that there are at least that I can personally come up with four very different community collaboration use cases mm -hmm. that may need different approaches. So the first one, and I'll just put it out there because I think it's very different, is the strictly local in-person community. So I'm a member of like a running fitness group um, in San Francisco, and that's, it's all around like local stuff with local people. And so that's, that's a very different particular focus. It, it is around a particular activity, but the local element, I think, changes it from a lot of the communities that that I'm seeing discussed in the Etherpad so far, which is much more virtual, online, open source type of thing. So local communities is one use case. Um, Quick yeah. question about that sure. one. Would you describe that as collaborative, a running group? Like, are, um, you, are you producing? We do do, ex we do, do it, That's a good question. Um, the exercises are almost always collaborative. Like, they're almost always team exercises. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very rarely like, uh, okay, we all just get together, and then, like, everyone follows this one thing on their own. There's almost always like collaboration, the exercise. Sometimes you're trying to accomplish some goal in terms of some number of sets or something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the creative output is from that other than you expend energy, feel a little fitter, and produce some pictures. Uh, the, but it could be like you get together and collaborate on like uh, like a local makerspace, where like the end of a collaboration is you actually produce some new 3D model you know, yeah. or something that you print and then you share. But still, the local element, I think, is that, that could be a dominant element of the community, which now it shapes. Like, so there is this phrase, community of purpose. Right. There's, you know, people are working together because they have a common goal, and that goal is to do something that will exist beyond that community. 
you know, Wikipedia yeah. is certainly an example of that. As, so opposed, to, as opposed to a, a drinking club, for example. Right. Community yeah. activity. Yeah. Yeah, right. I agree. That's, that's yeah. a good distinction. So then you had you, you, you said that was like one of, one of four. four. Yeah. So, so the next one I would say is a, a community around a specific project, mm -hmm. and maybe that's kind of what you're talking about. Uh, or where it's a community, especially around a specific open source project, at least this is a common pattern I see. Someone starts an open source project with the goal of like, I want to grow a community around this and have it not just be me. And that makes sense, and that's like a different problem than I think the local community one. Because typically you want, it, it doesn't, like borders shouldn't matter, and like language shouldn't ma like matter, and like all other kinds of like distinguishing aspects of whatever. Um, where you live and all that. You just like, is anyone interested in collaborating with this one open source tool? Mm -hmm. um, but there's like a repo somewhere. Maybe right. it's, you know, some joint space or shared space. The third one is a uh, community of a very, community that's like has a very specific like outlined purpose or goals that is what I would say like IndieWeb is a good example of where there's no one open source project, but there's a bunch of principles. So it's a community around a set of principles that, like, that brings people together. Like, yeah, this is your, if you like this kind of thing, yeah. Uh, these kinds of things, then here are other people that like these kinds of things. And then within that, there's like little sub communities. Like projects, see, like WordPress or whatever. But it's more about holding a space within which projects can happen rather than yes. a specific project. Yes. And then the last one is something like Wikipedia, where it's like super general, like all human knowledge, yeah. right? Where it's almost the intent is that it applies to everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's a community, but it's sort of meant to be open to it's it's meant to be useful and open to anyone to contribute regardless of your background or principles or whatever and that's um i see those four as so completely different in the way that they interoperate in like the problems they have in uh the challenges the architecture like and i don't know but but so, but pete suggested a few criteria like knowing who's contributed what and being able to see change. Yeah, that's. I, know, I think it, it's. Is that universal across? That's. The that, I feel like it is, and I think that that maybe. I think the discussion that's happened here, which is a good discussion, has. Been, it's. It's. It's got a bit of a different center of gravity than I was imagining, and I think this is. A, this really illustrates it, right? Because I think that those criteria, I think probably do apply to all four of those kinds of groups. Like, you know, if someone in the running club, like if you change the day of the week that you get together. Yeah, well, everyone, who, who everyone needs that. to know that you changed the week, and if someone has a problem with it, they need to know who changed it so they can talk to them. And like, all, like those, like I think those yeah. kind of criteria still apply. Yeah. And I do think the kinds of things that we've been discussing in here, I don't know if maybe they're a little bit more specific. Maybe that's what it is, or maybe they're more like. Well, there there are in-person groups that just choose to keep minutes. Mm -hmm. Right, and the minutes is part it solves that problem. Right. Right. Like the running group, they literally do a blog post after every single like yeah. meet, meeting, if you want to call it that, yeah. where they post pictures, a summary of the workout, and maybe some like funny thing of the day. Mm -hmm. And then maybe information about if there's anything different coming up for the next few yeah. workouts. Yeah. So I think there are principles, you know, I mean, in, in application, any particular group, they might play out differently, but it probably comes from some human need. Yeah, I think that like I'd, I'd be really interested in sort of in in maybe classifying the kinds of ideas that and this maybe I can just kind of do from the notes after. There's sort of classifying the kinds of things that come out of this discussion into like some sort of continuum of like uh, sort of philosophical principles at one end of the spectrum to like recommended best best practices for specific kinds of outcomes at the other end of the spectrum. You know, like like. So something like like um, diversity, uh, I, I completely agree, is tremendously important. Uh, but I would think of that as being like like that the that the the general conditions for the sort of technical conditions for what makes it possible for people to engage in collaboration. That like that choosing to do things that make it more diverse should occur within that framework, right? That there's sort of like a, like a, like a hierarchy of frameworks or something. Um, I don't know, that's, that's kind of my instinct well, about that. that. In, my, right in my project, we decided to have a weekly video uh, conference. Mm -hmm. And we just picked the time of day that kind of worked for the US and for the UK and not for Australia. Mm -hmm. And our Australia 
she buried her left because of that, and could not participate. So that wasn't very diverse on a, you know, where I live sort of thing, but it was just all I could handle. And so there was a decision. I mean, he could have started a complimentary hangout that might have worked for Europe and Australia and not for North America, but he didn't. So, uh, you know, what obligation do I have to support everybody versus, you know, get something going? Mm. Yeah. So you say your principle, you want to know what has changed and who has changed it. Okay. And how to, get, how to get in touch with them. Right, that applies to all four of these types of communities. Does it apply in general, not just to communities? Do I want to know about the, you know, the laws of my state? Mm -hmm. or a book even that even if you don't want to collaborate in changing them, yeah. if you just want to understand them better. Right, right. Just all, any mm -hmm. knowledge. So anything that's changing? Anything that's changing, I want to know what has changed that affects me. And maybe when who changed it, it, who changed it. You know, well, well, you know uh, we're a company where I work and we have a lot of customers and there's just the decisions that whatever we do inside the company when we make a decision, it's the company's decision, it's not an individual's decision and the fact, you know, if some customer wanted to say, well, who made this decision? Well, they don't get to know. Well, the company made the decision to the, to the, at the, from the outside, the company made the decision. Right, well, uh, like the inside might be a community and the outside sure. might be a community, but there's a barrier of basically sure. privacy there mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, won't be crossed. So these, so some of these things might be less, like if you, like for someone who doesn't, well, so, so, I mean, Wikipedia is kind of, is, is, is kind of interesting because it does offer all of these things to the reader, you know, and I think in the Wikipedia sort of philosophy, that's important because we want to have a low barrier to entry. Like, it, like we want people who are readers to be able to become contributors. For that's, that, that's right, and, and and there's a strong sense there of transparency. Mm -hmm. Lots of what goes on is written about, but not everything that goes on is mm -hmm. written about, like people's salaries mm -hmm. or board deliberations, right. for example, or you know, the board feels it can't operate without operating in private. Mm -hmm. They have minutes that are published, but they don't really read. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I think that, you know, you can reasonably ask how much does a community need to know to effectively operate as a community? And that is, uh, you know, and I think there's a strong decision making where change is made, the change is marked by. Yeah, and it's intentional that certain information is private so that people aren't distracted by it or so that personal privacy isn't violated or for a variety of, of reasons why you might choose to not Well, I, I would say our customers probably don't feel like the community. Maybe inside the company, we might feel like the community. But uh, even then, there's a management hierarchy with its own levels of secrecy. And, and I think that community is probably not a word that would be used that often. Well, I mean, I think like, a, like an example that might be a little bit closer to and make an easier contrast with Wikipedia would be like a traditional newspaper, you know, like the New yeah. York Times, right? Yeah. Transparency is an important value up to a point, right? Yeah. They want you to know like who the author of a story is. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. they, you know, they want you to know like what is a formal opinion of the paper versus what is an op-ed. Yeah, yeah, writers, yeah, yeah, specific yeah, yeah, opinions, yeah, stuff perfect. like that, right? So well but as, right? But as far as like which member of the editorial board drove the article about, you know, moving the freeway from this place to that place, you might, they might choose to have that sort of, well, no, it's a decision of the editorial board. And that's yeah. all the public ever gets to know about. It. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, there's this, there, there's, there's, um, there's centralized decision making about what is appropriate to have, yeah. uh, sort of public and what's not. There's a fifth type of community I just thought of that I just realized I see referred to often, but I I forgot about it because I don't do it myself. Um, bloggers often refer to having 
their community as a reference to themselves and everyone that comments on their posts that oftentimes comment back and forth as well. Yeah. And it's an interesting one that I've seen people uh, leave various social media silos because they get a sense that there isn't a community like on Medium or wherever. Right. But then they go, well, if I go to my own blog and I have my own comments that I curate and very strictly moderate, then, then I can build a community of people that are nice to each other and that like get to know each other over time as opposed to just like the drive-by commenters on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, especially for this crowd, I feel like that's a really mm -hmm. important type of community that it would be great to figure out how to enable that because there's, when I've seen it work, I've seen people take ideas for blog posts out of the comments and then like write a blog post about it. And then that becomes kind of the creative output. Mm -hmm. And there are some communities where, for example, the um, a prominent commenter actually then becomes a first class poster uh, further down the road. Oh yeah. Or actually it bubbles into like a great example is there was a site called The All, uh, where some of the commenters uh, created their own site called The Toast, which was a big thing that existed for a, for a really long time and had its own its own community, but it was sort of bubbled up. The All. The All. A-W-L. Yeah. Can, can you guys hear me? Hi. Hey, yeah. Hi. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's me. Uh, I just want to say that uh, the type of community Tentec was just describing is very big with gamers at the moment as well. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the website Twitch, which is a game streaming website. A lot of streamers will have their own community. Um, so in their chats, people turn up and it's the same people over and over again. A lot of them are now pulling those communities into Discord instances. I don't know if everyone's familiar with Discord as a service, uh, which is, I guess, Slack, but aimed at a different uh, type of people. Discord? And there they create these, these different yeah, channels different. as well, and people um, get known or get new ranks within a community, uh, which is a big community thing that I've seen develop over the last maybe one and a half, two years. Uh, just to get it right in our notes, can you say whether that was discourse or discord? Just, uh, spell discord. That. Oh. Discord. Yeah. Discordapp.com. Okay, mm -hmm. we've got it. There's also discourse, which yeah, is uh, sort, of, yeah. sort of along the lines of um, yeah. commenting. So, discus, yeah. sort of like discus. Yeah. Sorry, go for it. <laughs> so, I think I was, so I've been thinking that um, I I would say that this the fifth type that Tontek just mentioned I think is broader than just blogs and I would say yeah. it's, it's like um, there there are communities around things that don't directly participate in those things right so mm -hmm. um, for open source projects there's like people who actually work on the project. And then around that, there's like the, the users who, of the software. The people who use it, they talk about like this is how I use it. Like how can I improve this? Uh, and mm -hmm. and same with like blogs. It's it's a community of people around like you know one. They might person, be interested right? in projects, but they might not be political staff groups themselves. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's it's they're not directly participating, but they're just built around an existing structure. Yeah. Need to share that too. Right, you're all watching. Yeah, exactly. The person playing game, you're all reading this blog. Right, it's like common interest. I guess it's just a common interest community. Yeah. And to correct myself from previously, I have seen that form on social media as well. Mm -hmm. The specific mm -hmm. instance I can give you is Instagram and yoga teachers, mm -hmm. where they will post a bunch of they post a bunch of photos or tips about alignment or poses or how to do that kind of thing. And then they have a whole bunch of people in the comments who are trying to do those things and asking questions and talking to each other as well. And then they'll once in a while get on and post a story, like an Instagram story, where the person, the, the teacher that who owns the account, talks about like reaching out to their community or thanks to their community. And they're literally referring to all those people that are commenting and interacting with their social media account as their community. And so, do, do you know where this happens all the time is YouTube. Yeah. So, and so then also, so that happened a lot in my original wiki, mm -hmm. where a form of a page 
turned out to be somebody writing what was essentially a position statement. And then after that, a lot of people checking in to describe to the degree to which they agree with that or they find counterexamples and so forth. But uh, that position statement always sat at the top of the page and then discussion would be after that. I think on Wikipedia, it tends to be the article and the talk pages. But, uh, you know, the, the, the commitment to write a, you know, write about a position statement is a lot different than the commitment to write a position statement. Mm -hmm. I think uh, just to broaden it a little bit beyond the web, too, uh, I think you and I discussed this a little bit as well. The, uh, when I was uh, developing a program for supporting... Uh, is it five-minute warning? Okay. For supporting university instructors in, in creating Wikipedia assignments, one of the professors I talked to was a, uh, was a journal editor, and he talked about his frustration that his, even his grad students couldn't really perceive the, uh, the kind of communication that happens within an academic journal over a period of years, right? Someone writes an article, a few months go by, someone comes up with the idea, and then they submit, and then I think it's a year or so before the response article comes out, and then there's this sort of back and forth communication that leads to the building of knowledge over maybe five or ten years. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a similar kind of dynamic. He was frustrated because it was hard for a student who's in a two-year program to participate. Even, even, per even perceive that it was happening, right, much less right. be a participant. So I think that's, I mean, that, that seems, I, I almost might, is, is a community of inquiry a term that you've, I that's, haven't, no. Yeah, it's not one that I've, I've heard, but it's like that sort of just popped into my head. It's like maybe a difference between a community of practice, right? If it's a, like if there's a, like, an area that you're trying to kind of get to the, like that's a, you know, in academics, maybe that's a little bit more, I mean, I guess you are practicing, like producing knowledge, but it's. Yeah, yeah, it, it, well, you know, a, a lot of it, uh, if you choose to work with fruit flies, you're automatically part of the fruit fly yeah. people, and we yeah. pick, uh, you know, bacterium instead, or, or a particular breed of hairless rats or something, you know, it, it, it you know, it's, it's like all this, like how to keep the darn things alive and whatever, and and you know what genes you're knocking out on and so forth. But it, it, uh, you know, they're just natural communities based on what you necessarily need to make. Right. Mm -hmm. Part of that forms during the conferences. Yes. With other people. And, and and which ones you you know choose to attend. You know, I was thinking about diversity, and, and my wiki was not particularly diverse in gender or even nationality. We all spoke English, uh, but nobody argued about whether C or small talk was covered. You know, everybody chose, because before that, a lot of the conversations that might have happened were in user groups, right. you know, and the C user groups would just sit around and talk about how crazy those small talk people are, and the small talk people would talk about how stupid, you know, C++ is, and, and uh, you know, so we somehow crossed that boundary by how we chose to talk about our experience. Yeah. I think what, maybe one last uh, idea I'd like to get in, something I stuck towards the end of the page I linked, is uh, we're thinking about effective collaboration. Uh, it might be worthwhile to also think about like, what's utility or what's the opposite? What's the, you know, like Sisyphus pushing a rock up the hill only to see it roll back down or catalyst reaching for the grapes and they can never quite reach them. Like, like what are the, what, what does it look like? And, and, and maybe there's something about, maybe that helps get at the diversity thing, right? Like maybe at, like 95% of your community is happy, like that might on the surface seem great, but if the 5% that don't are, you know, all people of color, then that might be a problem that, you know, if you're just looking at it in terms of percentages, like, you know, exploring the futility might be, well, and might be helpful at sort of at solving it. And that's the people that are already in the community. There's this whole set of people who might not even, even get to that right. point. Because right. they don't and and the symptom is talking yeah. past each other, yeah. you know, yeah. just repeating back and forth things that just aren't aligning. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go to, I'll go to another well, this is so we're, we're going to go down. Yeah, I put it in one, 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 one already. <laughs>
maybe it's time. So, yeah, maybe it's time. Well, but, um, thank you. Maybe one one request though. Maybe uh, if everyone can put like a Twitter handle or some way to contact you in the Etherpad, it might be nice if you if you want to carry the yeah. forward. Is there a link to this? Yes. Yes. Cool. It's amazing. All right. Give me the Etherpad.